Hey, thanks for joining me for this video in our personal finance series. And we're going to be talking specifically about consumer interest and interest on consumer loans. So in this video, we're going to start with the simplest method for calculating interest, and that's what we call the add-on method. Now, the add-on method gets its name because what we do is we simply uh, add the interest onto the principal. Now, this sounds fairly obvious, but there are several different ways of calculating interest on a consumer loan. Now, we're going to go through how to calculate interest using the add-on method, and then we'll talk about some of the particulars related to um, the frequency to which this method is used uh, with regards to consumer loans in general. So let's start real quick with just the equation for the add-on method. So the equation to calculate interest, which I'm going to abbreviate simply as I, is P, which represents our principal, R, which is our interest rate and T, which is time, which is commonly expressed in the number of years. On the left-hand side here, I'll go ahead and put a little bit of a legend so you know exactly what we're gonna be using each of these letters for. So let's walk through a calculation for this so you can see how to use the formula. It's pretty simple as you can imagine, uh, but let's go through it just to be thorough. So the, let's say that we are, we're getting a loan and the principal amount for the loan is gonna be $5,000. Next thing we need to know is the interest rate on this particular loan. Now, let's just say that we're going to be paying 8% on this particular loan. And so we're going to convert that to a decimal, which is 0 0.08. It's really important that you do that because if you don't, you're going to get a huge number for what you would owe in interest, which is going to be unrealistic. And let's say this loan is going to be carried out for three years. Now, all we simply need to do is to multiply each of these numbers together. So what I would recommend that you do is go ahead and pause the video and perform the calculations on your own, and then you can go ahead and resume and just make sure that you got the correct answer, which I'm sure you did. Now, if you were to multiply 5,000 by 0 0.08 or 8%, you would get $400, and multiplied over the three years, over the three-year period, we would have an interest of $1,200. Now, in order to calculate our actual payments, what we need to do and why this is referred to as the add-on method is we're going to be taking the interest and we're going to actually add it onto the principal to figure out what our loan amount would be. So very simply, we would take the 5000 and we would add it to 1200 which would give us $6,200. So this would be the amount that we would owe over the three years. Now we can then use this to calculate our monthly payment. So we know that there are 12 months in a year. So in three years, there are gonna be 36 months. So if we take the total amount we're gonna owe, principal and interest, which is the 6,200, and we divide that number by 36, we can get to the amount or our actual monthly payment over the course of these 36 months. That will get us to $172.22. This becomes our monthly payment, assuming this method. Now, I'm sure you can realize pretty quickly that this is a, a very easy method to calculate interest for, um, but I do want to provide uh, a little bit of information regarding the frequency to which this is used. Um, so, the add-on method is not a very common method of calculating interest. And the reason for that is it actually doesn't really work to the benefit of the borrower. So in this case, the person that's taking out the loan. Because what happens is the principal that I'm paying is equally divided over that period of time. So I'm paying it at the same rate, but I don't receive any benefit for paying um, for making my payments, my interest payment just don't drop subsequently after that. So this is substantially more expensive for the borrower or the person that's actually taking out of a loan uh, because of the fact that the interest is equally applied over the entire loan. So from the start of the loan, if over here this is supposed to represent interest and on this axis we show time, the interest payment stays the same. Now, typically on most loans, if you're making payments and your principal is decreasing, then that, of course, impacts the amount of interest that you pay. So over time, your interest payments would look more like this. 
Uh, so as a result, you simply don't get a very significant benefit to using this method. And it's really why it's kind of confined uh, to only subprime type consumer loans and in very rare cases. Um, so while this is a very simple method to use, it's not one that's very common that we see in consumer lending simply because of the fact that the interest is applied blanketly for the entire duration of the loan as opposed to uh, on a declining basis or tied to how much there is in principle. Now that we've determined our monthly payment using the add-on method and ultimately how much interest we're going to pay over the life of the loan, which is the $1,200, uh, we can work and calculate our annual percentage rate based upon all that information. So the first thing I'm going to give you is the equation for calculating an annual percentage rate. And I apologize in advance. Uh, it is a little bit lengthy, but stay with me and we'll go through how to perform all of the calculations and what each of the actual variables means. So first we're going to start with APR and that's what we're trying to solve for. And in this equation, APR equals Y multiplied by 95 times P plus 9 multiplied by what we call F and we divide that by 12 multiplied by P and then multiplied by P plus 1 multiplied by 4D plus F. Now at this point this looks like a gigantic mess and makes absolutely no sense. Um, so let's go through and talk about what each of the variables refers to so then we can solve. Now the first one we're going to talk through is APR. Uh, we know that APR stands for what we call the annual percentage rate. The way you want to think about APR is this is the actual cost of the borrowed money. Um, so this is what we're going to be paying in interest each year um, based upon the factors that are presented here. Now, now, just previously, we talked about how the interest rate we're using is the 8%, uh, but because of the fact that the interest continues over the full life of the loan, that impacts what we actually pay in interest uh, total, so that all our APR is actually going to be different from that 8% we used to calculate interest via the add-on method. So continuing with kind of our run through all of the different variables, the first one we have is APR, which we know is annual percentage rate. The next one we have is Y. Now Y is going to represent the number of payments in a year. So for us, this number is always going to be 12 because we're breaking the payments down on a monthly basis. The next variable is the letter F, and the letter F represents the finance charges in dollars. This essentially represents what we've paid in interest over the full life of the loan. The next variable is D. D stands for debt, or in our case, represents the actual amount that we are borrowing. And lastly, we have the letter P. P represents the total number of payments that are scheduled. Now, it's easy to confuse P with Y. So Y, of course, is the number of payments within a year. P, we're talking about the total number of payments regardless of how often we're making them. So this would be 36 for us. Since we have a three-year loan, we're making 12 payments in equal amounts over those three years. Well, now that we've kind of identified all the different variables, let's start filling in what we know, and then we can go through the process of doing the calculations. If you feel pretty confident at this point, you're welcome to pause the video, perform the calculations on your own, pick back up, and then you can kind of check your work, completely up to you. So for the first, we're gonna fill in Y. So this is the number of payments that we're gonna have in years. So Y for us rep is 12. And we're gonna multiply that by 95 times P. P is the total number of payments that are scheduled. So this is gonna be 36. And we're gonna add nine to that variable. Just to keep things fair with order of operations, I'm gonna add an extra set of parentheses. And we're gonna multiply that by F. F is of course the interest that we're gonna pay over the life of the loan. And this is 1200. So we've successfully, successfully completed the numerator section of the equation. Now let's work on the bottom half. So 12 multiplied by P. Again, P is going to be 36. And then we're going to take P plus 1. So this is 36 plus 1, which would get us 37. 
multiplied by four times D. Now D again is the amount of debt. So we're taking four, multiplying it by 5,000, which is the amount of money we're withdrawing as a loan. And we multiply that last piece, or add it, I should say, to F, which is going to be 1,200. So up to this point, this is what your equation should look like. Uh, so again, just to kind of review, um, we have taken the number of payments in a year. We're, of course, going to multiply that by the result of 95 by our total amount of payments scheduled, 36, adding that to 9, multiplying by 1,200. And then on the bottom half of the equation, multiplying 12 by 36, multiplying the result of that by 36 plus 1, or 37. And then on the, the latter portion, 4 times 5,000, and then adding our full interest to that amount. So in the next section here, we're now going to go through and we're going to perform some of the calculations. So I have these previously prepared. Again, if you want to on your own, you're welcome to pause the video, do the calculations on your own. Be careful for the order of operations. Um, so when you are doing uh, you know, certain things like um, 4 times D plus F, uh, make sure that you multiply 4 times the debt, which is 5,000, and then add it to F. Uh, don't take you know 5,000 plus F and then multiply it before you I mean you want to make sure and follow the sequence um, so you don't get tripped up at any point now I'm going to go ahead and fill in what I've calculated based upon the information present so I've got 12 multiplied by 3429 multiplied by 1200 now this is the numerator portion of the equation and on the denominator we have 432 multiplied by 37, that one was easy, and multiplied by 21,200. Now, taking a step further, if we go one more layer, on the top hand, if we multiply 12 by 3,429 by 1,200, you should receive 49,377,600. Now on the bottom portion, same thing. We're going to multiply 432 by 37 by 21,200. Uh, so this we are going to get a pretty large number here, and that number is 388,860,800. Now at this point, we simply have to divide, and we get the correct answer. So if you divide those, uh, taken to uh, four decimal places, you would get 0.1269. Or if you want to convert it to a percentage, which makes it easier, you'd round that to 12.7%. So just to kind of review, based upon us having a $5,000 loan, taking out an 8% interest over three years using the add-on method, we would pay an effective interest rate or APR of 12%. 0.7%. So that's helpful if you're ever taking out a consumer loan via the add-on method. Again, it's very rare, uh, but in the event that you are, um, you want to be able to determine what's the APR, or what's the interest rate. And this gives you the ability to compare that particular loan product with maybe others that you have because uh, communicating things in APR is very common in consumer lending language. Uh, so if you were to have a credit card, for example, there's probably an APR for that credit card. If you were to go to a bank, they would quote you an APR for a particular loan. So it makes it easier to compare different loan products if you can convert them into APR, which we did below. So hopefully that was helpful. If you have any questions, feel free, post below, and thanks for watching. Thanks for checking out this video. Uh, if you learned something or enjoyed it, please like and share, and of course, subscribe so you can get updates on additional content in the future.